Okay, back to talking about books. Lots of books, heavy books. So my last Veep vlog was about um, this occult tea hashtag that some social media personalities started and it didn't have anything to do with books. So I wanna to apologize to the booktubers who are on here that are just watching for books. You can just ignore that one. I also talk about witchcraft and stuff that I'm into on this channel as well. So that really had nothing to do about books, but I just need to put in my two cents worth because well, they asked for it and they got what they asked for. But anyway, back to books. And this is one that was my surprise book of the month. I got it from the book club of the month. Like I started doing that last year. I don't really have words for this one because I, I, I got it because I thought, shit, I have to choose a damn book. And I didn't like the first selection I did of book club of the month. I just... I, did, I got, you know how you get one book for free for $5? Didn't like it. I'm not going to say what it was because I don't want to bash it. But it just wasn't for me. But this Heartless Hunter, this was a February pick and I thought, this is going to be stupid. It was not. It was actually really good. The weird thing is this is technically considered young adult. So I don't really know how to start off describing this one. It's just, it, I don't really have a lot of words for it other than it's a, it's what they call enemies to lovers. Maybe. I think, I think that's where this is going. I think that's, but there's a cliffhanger, and I hate that shit, but there's a cliffhanger. But it's about an alternative universe, world, whatever, fantasy. If you like fantasy, you'll like this. If you like things about witches, you'll like this. It's it's about a witch and a witch hunter. Very interesting. <laughs> I, uh, I, I actually really enjoyed this. I didn't think I was going to like it because some of that stuff I don't like because I know the very real history of the burning times, and I don't like to read about it. But I just took a chance on it, and I'm... Um, really eager for book two actually which is weird i usually don't like stuff like this but i really like this book now this this one oh this one <laughs> t kingfisher yeah kingfisher um this is just this this one i'm still reading now why am i still reading this one because i have to put it down this is folk horror or horror as we say in the south folk horror done right and there's not a lot of, so far, blood and gore and stuff like that, but it's hinted at. I don't like a lot of, you know, 20th century Stephen King type horror where they're describing all this gross shit. It just, it's just not something that I want in my brain. So, but this, this right here is just so, um, if you like folk horror and you like dark fairy tales and you like liminal spaces, liminal places, if you like the, the psychological T.J. or T. Kingfisher, T. Kingfisher. I guess that's a pen name. I don't know, but this this is for you. And again, I'm I'm just that much into it, and I really don't know what to think about it. It's, I mean, I know what to think about it. I like it, but it's kind of freaking me out. Like this is not something that I'm going to read before I go to bed. My husband likes this stuff too, so I told him that he had to read this and let me know what he thinks. But the back says, basically, Kara finds the words in the mysterious bunker that she's discovered behind a hole in the wall of her uncle's house. And those words are pray that they are not hungry. Weird. Freshly divorced and living back at home, Kara now is obsessed with these cryptic words and starts exploring this peculiar area. And th they're being very vague. Like this is a whole new world. This is like a dark adult Narnia. I mean, it's weird. And she, and she starts discovering that there are all these portals to all these realities. These place, places are haunted by creatures that seem to hear thoughts. And it's very psychological. The more you fear them, the more, I guess, it becomes real. This shit's just intense. So this is, I've, I've wanted to read something by this author for a while, but just haven't been able to do it. Because I really, like, I, I have a very active dream world life anyway I don't like the negativity but um I don't experience anything negative like this protagonist does in this book but this is like if things were really bad I did you just 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 read the fucking book I don't want to give it away so these two have been really pleasantly um it's, it's interesting I I didn't think I would like either of those as much as I'm loving them um this is Okay, this has been a popular book among young adults, even though I don't know. I think it should probably be in the new adult section. And I know there's a lot of kind of controversy between new adult and young adult and all that jazz. But uh, I'm not going to get into that. 
Carrie Maniscalco. I don't want to mispronounce her name. I probably just did. But this is this is a series. This book has been just such like a complete and total enjoyment. This is just like a guilty, a guilty. I don't believe in guilty reads, but this, if there was such a thing, this is it. It's like eating a box full of bonbons. It's just this dark fantasy romance. Dark. But it's it's witchy. It's about demons. <laughs> and it gets really entertaining. So I'll just leave it at that. And it's so entertaining that I finished it Monday and yesterday. I want y'all to know this. I had to go out and I had to buy the other two at the local Books A Million. We only have one bookstore in the county. And uh, yeah, so I um, I started this last night. I started the second book. It's a trilogy. And I found this, but this was this was at Barnes & Noble, but it had this Walmart fake book sticker. So, so this was on their clearance table, basically. I guess it was overstock books. I'm sorry, Books A Million bought. Etowah County is not cool enough to have a Barnes & Noble. But this was basically overstock, and I think that's why it was six bucks. So I got the hardback on clearance for six bucks instead of buying the paperback in this for thirteen dollars. So that was a deal. But I did, I did get the second one, and I just started it. And so always look at sales tables books because usually recent paperbacks that have come out two years ago, they'll put them on clearance tables. Do that. And I still like to read books. Why? Because books like this that I'm not going to keep or collect forever and ever, I'll pass on to my aunt. And I trade books back and forth with people who trade mutually and trade decent books. So I do that with my aunt and my godson. They're the only two people I can trust with books. Um, so I just showed you guys those. Oh my gosh. So I'm reading Divine Rivals. Now, one of my friends who's a hairstylist, was she reads like every night to calm down, to, you know, unwind from the day, and she has kids, so that's her special safe place where she reads her books, and she recommended this book to me, Divine Rivals. I'm on chapter 12. I know this is a popular book, especially with people in their 30s. I'm not loving it as much as what I thought I would be loving it. I know that the sequel is out, and I, and I understand that this is, and it is a good book. It's about, you know, two characters who are involved in the society that's shredded by war and they're writing each other they're both reporters and it's and it's a slow burn romance from what i'm gathering it, it is sweet um and i like it i just it's not i'm not liking it i'm not like crazy about it like everyone kept recommending this book to me they're like oh you're an english major you're an english teacher you'll love this book and i do love it it's just i don't know maybe i just need like really whimsical kind of trashy stuff to read i i don't know y'all but this is, okay, so this is a series, and I covered the first one on my my uh, V-blog on demon-themed romance novels that, for whatever reason, is, like, really popular with younger people today, which is funny. My mom got into a little bit of that back when she was, like, you know, in her 50s. She would read these Laura Hamilton books, or what were they called, Hamilton books? I've never read one, I don't think, but apparently they were the precursor to a lot of the paranormal and fantasy romance books that you have today. I know the last name was Hamilton, but I think the first, I don't know. Just, you can just look those up. I think they're about vampires though. And I'm not a vampire chick. Just don't like vampires. But this came out about, this came out over 10 years ago now, I think. And the first one did. And this is part of, it's a sequel to Daughter of Smoke and Bones, Days of Blood and Starlight. And this was an alternative world, fantasy world. Kind of takes place in our world, but then skips over to a fantasy world and the main character is just I, I like the main character and she's finding out a lot about her past her story continues she's basically the reincarnation of a demon and her eternal yet forbidden love as an angel <laughs> and if that's not epic I don't know what is but I read the first one last year and loved it and I'm slowly savoring this series because I tend to blow through stuff like this really fast. Again, I love this book. Uh, I love the series. And those are the other books in the series. Again, I read the first one, Smoke and Bomb. The third one would be Gods and Monsters. So this is definitely a must if you're into that sort of stuff. And I'll hold all these up. So I think I have all the binds facing out. So yeah. So just a... Uh, selection of basically what I'm reading now and we'll be finishing you can tell that one series I'm just blowing through just blowing through like crazy anyway oh my gosh good day to you and I hope you're having a wonderful peaceful day wherever you are 
and until next time.